Hello. Thank you, Bhavan Vidyalay, Chandigarh, for inviting me to speak at the Model United Nations Conference 2020, speak about an issue which is very close to my heart, rural poverty. For the pa past few months, uh, we have all been under a lockdown, um, the entire nation, in fact, the entire world, trying to keep ourselves safe from the pandemic and also our families. But there is a large section of our population, especially the poor, who have not been able to afford this lockdown. At a great risk to their lives and the lives of their uh, families, they have had to leave the cities and walk all the way to their homes. Several of them, thousands, lakhs of them, have moved from cities back to their village, to their villages from where they had come. So the question arises, these eight crore migrant workers, many of whom have traveled on foot, by train, in buses, back home from cities to their villages. Who are they? Why do they travel from their villages to the cities? What do they do in these cities? Migration, as we all know, is the movement of uh, population from rural to urban in search of livelihood. Now, this happens mainly because the rural areas, the villages, are heavily dependent on agriculture, which is not viable anymore. There are several reasons why agriculture is not viable. Uh, what, some of them are crop failure, uh, repeatedly because of weather conditions, because of lack of irrigation, because of uh, uh, lack of knowledge about uh, seeds and agricultural practices. Agriculture becomes non-viable. It becomes difficult for farmers to make profit from agriculture. That is one of the main reasons for rural poverty. The second most important reason is lack of interventions policies of the government which could have improved uh, the situation of the farmers or agriculture or improved the, uh, the conditions in which the poor live. As we all are aware, again I hope uh, the young people who are listening to this are aware of the conditions of our villages. There have been thousands, in fact lakhs of farmer suicides in our villages. According to uh, the government figures, there have been 3.5 lakh farmer suicides since 1995 to 2018. Um, the farmers kill themselves because they are unable to support their families, um, they are unable to repay debts and the sad part is that the people of this country, the voters of this country as well as the government and the policy makers are aware of these problems. So when there is this kind of indifference towards their lives and their problems, the only option left with a large section of the population in this country is to move away from these uh, villages and their farmlands towards cities searching for income, searching for livelihoods. That is what migration fundamentally is. Um, this does not mean that they are improving their situation. Most of the people who migrate from villages to the cities remain poor. Um, it doesn't also mean that the government has uh, uh, policies for the migrants. Uh, they are in fact invisible to the government. The second thing which one should uh, focus on, on what do these migrants do when they come to the village, uh, come to the cities from the villages? Um, across India, there is a lot of demand for uh, migrant labor in the cities, mainly because of one major activity, which is construction. Uh, migrant workers are employed in construction sector, uh, the maximum, uh, mainly in making structures which we all are proud of in our cities and represent the development of this country. They also make our homes, they also pave the roads, they also make the bridges. Uh, but once these structures are made, once these uh, bridges and the roads are and, and the marble is laid in these beautiful homes and offices, these migrant workers vanish from the sea. They live in little tenements, They've, their children play in the dust while these structures are getting made. But once they are done, once these, uh, these beautiful buildings are finished, the migrant workers fade into the background. Then they are unemployed again. Then they have to be employed in another construction site. The condition of the migrant workers does not change however uh, much they work hard 
uh, and whatever structures they make, however proud we are of our cities, somehow they, it does not reflect in improving the condition of these labor. This pandemic which we are witnessing right now, in fact makes one thing very clear. We can no longer ignore the poor of this country. The well-being of the poor will translate into the well-being of the rich or the affluent classes. There seem to be, until now, a kind of belief that there is a difference between the rural, the poor, the distant farmer and his or her family, and the urban, rich, the wealthy, the influential classes. This pandemic actually dispels that notion. There is no difference. Each one's well-being will translate into everyone's well-being. Now, how do we make that happen? I have a great hope from the next generation, the young uh, boys and girls and the youth who are going to go out in the world and perhaps bring the change which the earlier generations have uh, not been able to or failed to bring about. For doing that, there is it is absolutely necessary that um, few things are followed. First, do not get dissuaded by the fact that earlier governments, earlier generations have not been able to bring any change in the poverty of this country. It's a very regular refrain that the poor of this country are too many of them, that we will not be able to do anything about the poor, that this will continue as it is. I do not think so. I believe that if we ask the right questions, if we make the right suggestions, and especially if we start thinking for the poor, we will be able to bring about a difference. With that, I'd like to end my very brief talk uh, to you. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.